Hey everybody, Chris Bryant here. Got a CCNA two minute tip of the day for you. Distance is relative. And I know that's awfully deep sounding, especially if you're watching this first thing in the morning. Uh, but you'll see what we're talking about in just a moment because I'm going to do a quick lab for you on live equipment that's a good refresher on a very important CCNA topic. And also on the very next board, I've got a bit.ly link for you that I'll put in the YouTube description as well. And that will take you to a page on my website that has a lot more information about this particular topic. And before I start this two minute timer, I just want to mention, especially if you're just getting started with your studies, when you're studying intro level theory for anything, you know, it's easy to think in your darkest moments, do I really need to know this stuff? And that can go for the networking models, that can go for the theory, that can go for OSPF information about LSAs. But I'm telling you, just about everything you learn in networking theory, you're going to use again and again and again. And we're going to go over one such topic right here. So let's go ahead and hit the clock. And I'm going to go and bring the live equipment up as well, because what I want to get, do is give you a quick refresher on a floating static route. And a couple of little gotchas here. And I'm going to use iOS help as we go along, because it never hurts to refresh yourself on this command. And quickly, in the IP route command, we've got our destination network, our destination prefix mask. Watch that on your exam. And then either the local router, exit interface, or the next hop IP address. So I went with next hop IP address here. And as we see, iOS help shows us it is a legal command. But if I'm making this a floating static route with OSPF involved, uh, what I want then is if OSPF has already discovered this route that I'm running the static routing for, with a floating static route, I want the static route to go in the table only if the OSPF route leaves for some reason. So in that case, I've got to change the administrative distance. And that's what I was mentioning earlier, because administrative distance is one of those topics that students look at sometimes and say, OK, I'm going to learn this for exam, and then I don't have to worry about it. Well, you do have to worry about it, because to write a floating static route correctly, you've got to know what these ADs are. Now, you could look in the routing table, but you want to know what the ADs are anyway. So what's the minimum number I could put here, or how do I do it anyway? if I want to set the administrative distance to one higher than OSPF. And that would be 111, but how do I do it? And I get messages on this one pretty often. And what I want to show you, distance metric for this route is a little misleading. You're not setting the metric or the cost for the route. You're setting the administrative distance. And that's simply what the command would be right there. You don't have to put the word distance or anything like that. Just put 111 right there at the end. But that's one reason you need to know your ADs is to write a floating static route correctly, which is going to show up on your exams in, in the strangest places in production networks I've learned. And also, you need to know exactly where to put that administrative distance. And it's just at the tail end of the IP route command. Now, what's this bit.ly link here? This is my floating static route page on my website. And it's got my three-part YouTube lab on there. It's probably about 15, 20 minutes total. And it's really good stuff to watch. I uh, couldn't put it in one video at the time because of the YouTube time limits at the time. Uh, but do check that out. And also, if you're on my YouTube channel, you might just want to search on floating static route. And it will be all there waiting for you. Thanks for watching today's CCNA 2-Minute Tip of the Day. We went a little long today, but I think there's some information there that will definitely help you get certified. And as always, thanks for making TBA part of your CCNA success story.